Hey, Dave. A, a tight end's a young quarterback's best friend, and having De the two Dillons back, I imagine that that kind of opened up some things you could do for for Jeff to help him um, in terms of the offense. And you kind of saw, I think, maybe his comfort level uh, kind of go up, and that probably helped the turnover thing, I would imagine, as well. Well, it's also part of the game plan versus those type of defenses, those odd defenses that you'd like to be in two tight ends. Um, so the you know the start of our game plan on on uh, a week ago was <clears throat> to try to get both of those guys on the field, and now you have some good depth with those guys being back at Jack Coco playing at a high level, Billy Ward playing at a high level. It was you know easy to be able to you know put a good 12 personnel game plan together and. Uh, put some longer, bigger bodies on the field to try to, you know, move those guys around and really stretch out some, some gaps in the run game um, against those 30 defenses. And then, um, you know, had a couple opportunities to put it downfield to them and dump it to them in the naked game. So it does open up a bunch of stuff, and you know, it just makes you more flexible with what you're calling and. And, uh, you know, those guys are so athletic that they could go out there and play in some spread sets, too. So it gives you a lot of uh, pieces to be able to move around week to week. Next question comes from Rod McKenzie from 247 Sports. Hey, Dave, last, last week you talked about maybe perhaps wanting Sims if he, he didn't have an open receiver to pull the ball down and maybe run and uh, – rather than try to force the ball in. It seems like he carried out that plan pretty well against Louisville. Yeah, he did. I mean, you know, there, there was a cool stat about, um, you know, guys that have been able to, you know, throw for over 250 yards and run for 60 yards in a game, you know, over the course of the season. And uh, he's done that three times. So, you know, his ability to, to run and break the pocket down um, is, is, has been really effective. Um, and it's just a growth thing, right? It's a maturity thing, not trying to force the ball downfield and take it what they give you and be a good athlete. And, um, you know, our sack numbers are, are, are very, very low, knock on wood, right? So part of that is because he's been able to move around in the pocket and get us out of trouble and, and um, you know, break the defense down running the ball. So, you know, sometimes you feel like you have to be able to sling the ball all around to be efficient. And... At the end of the day, you just got to get 10 yards, right? So however you could get those 10 yards, I'm great with. And uh, he made, a, uh, you know, much better decisions uh, with the ball and, uh, and trusted his legs to go get him some first down. So uh, he's been, uh, you know, he's been in the office this week and, you know, preparing. We wipe the slate clean and, and uh, you learn from the things that happened the week before and you prepare for the week, things that are coming during the week. So, um, you know, he did a good job, but we're on to the next one. Next question comes from Bailey Johnson with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Hey, um, obviously Malachi Carter had a big game last week. I'm just wondering how you've seen him develop and sort of what the biggest areas of growth you've seen from him over the last year are. I think his understanding of how to play receiver at an elite level is, uh, has been really special. Kerry Dixon's an elite uh, wide receiver coach, so you know, under his tutelage, all of that, that whole room has really grown. Um, Malachi's confidence is a lot higher. Um, he's made plays in games against really good players, which I think helps your confidence. He does it every day against Trey Swelling and Zamari and all those guys, you know, who our corners don't give up a lot of deep balls. You know, if you look at them historically uh, in the game, so they're, they're going at it every week, uh, every day in practice. And, and he's just, you know, become more and more comfortable in understanding the scheme and understanding where the ball's going to be thrown and, how to get off people, how to use his releases. Um, and then his, his body has just matured. He's gotten a lot stronger. He's more explosive. Um, you know, Luke Corral has done a great job with him in, in, in the weight room and in uh, his running technique and those type of things. So when you watch him, he's very explosive. Even in, in some of the plays that um, he didn't have the ball, he ran some comebacks that were really sharp. He ran a couple digs that were really sharp. So. Um, you know, he's playing at, at a very high level, and if he can use, continues to do that, you know, the sky's the limit for him. He, he could be a Sunday player. Next question from Patrick Canaro from Ramblin' Sports. Hey, good morning, Coach Padnote. I was curious if you felt proud or paranoid when you saw Jameer Gibbs launch himself over that defender at the goal line. <laughs> 
You know, I, I was I was I cracked up a little bit with his explanation after the game where he was trying to let everybody know like he was gonna make a split decision about whether to run a guy over or hurdle a guy or whatever. Um, and you know, that's just instincts, right? I, you know, I was happy as heck that he got in the end zone. That's where I started and then uh, after the game, I was like, hey, big guy, can you, you know, don't get somersaulted right there, you know? And uh, he said, I had it, coach. I had it the whole way. I was like, okay, man, you know. And, and by why, in my best days, I wasn't going to be able to make that play. So I said, okay, do you, man, at that point. But, um, you know, that was a huge play for us, obviously. You know, we took a tough penalty down in there on the screen. We got knocked back, and uh, Jeff stood in there under a heavy pressure and delivered it to him. And, you know, once you get the ball to that guy in space, anything can happen. Um, and he made the first guy miss and then outran two other guys and jumped over a guy. I don't know what else you could do, but um, he's a special talent. Those, those freshmen, um, you could see the, the, the maturity with those guys every day. You know, we're playing three freshmen predominantly at their position, um, which is exciting for our future. Um, sometimes is, you pull your hair out a little bit with, with some of the things that they do because they are young. But they're playing at a very high level, so we're really excited about uh, about all of those guys. Uh, next question is from Ken Segura from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Um, actually, if I can follow up on what you just said about your three freshmen, um, I, I imagine it. I'm sure you're not thinking so much about down the road, but it's, it must be exciting to have three real key pieces that you know you have some runway with and. You'll get to see them develop and grow over, over the next over several years. Yeah, I mean this this whole freshman class is really good. You know, those three guys have gotten an opportunity to get a lot of burn, and they've played at a very high level. But this whole class is really good. The young the young linemen are going to be good players. The tight ends are good. You know, Billy has gotten some burn in there. Um, you know, obviously Jameer and and uh, but the, you know the guys the receivers who haven't been playing as much. Um, are very, very good. So um, that's testimony to, to who we are and what we do. Coach Collins' commitment um, to recruiting at a high level. Um, it makes my job much easier when you have really, really good players. Um, and those guys, you know, you, you're talking about a guy on the edge in, in a tackle um, who you'd never know as a freshman. You know, you're never calling his number for the wrong things. Even, the, you know, he jumped off sides the other day. It was more of a snap issue than, than him really jumping off sides. So um, he's, been, he's been very, very good. Jeff's coming into his zone, is, you know. So I think that the future's really bright. I think, you know, as fans of tech football, we can be really excited about what the future holds for these guys. And uh, we're, you know, we're really fortunate that, th that those guys are out there running around on Bobby Dodd. Time for a couple more for Coach Pat Node. We'll start with one from Christopher Hall. He covers Clemson for Sports Illustrated. Uh, hi, Coach. The Tigers defensively have been pretty efficient. I think they've only given up one touchdown in the first half. Just uh, talk about how important it is to get a fresh start, and get some rhythm early to kind of get this, the tempo going Saturday. Yeah, well, I mean, it's that way every game, right? You want to try to get off to a good start. But these guys, you know, the funny thing with these guys is that you – uh, you never really know what you're going to get until you get there because they're so multiple in what they do. Coach Venables is, you know, as good a defensive coordinator as there is in, at any level of football. Um, you know, you often go into a game and you say, okay, are they four down or are they three down? Well, they're both. You know, do they play a middle close or do they play a middle open? They're both. You know, do they run the odd stack? Yes. Uh, are they in uh, bare fronts? Yes. Do they blitz? Yes. Do they drop eight? Yes. You know, so... Um, you know, schematically, it's difficult, and, and you know, usually once they settle in, they, they settle into what they're going to do. But uh, very rarely is it, you know, a carbon copy of what they've done in the past. So, it, you know, it's interesting to have to settle into a game with them. You have to be able to do your stuff at a high level. Um, your execution has to be uh, on plays where you think, okay, it doesn't really matter what they're in. We're going to be good with this play. Uh, you can't really scheme them to say, well, this is a this is a 30 run or a, a quarters pass or whatever because they may never run that stuff the whole day. So uh, their package is, is really, really good, really elite. Um, they, they are always in a good call. They try to hold their call to be in a good call. And, you know, it's no secret they have really good players, you know. So when you have those uh, combinations, it, it, it does lead to an elite defense. 
Um, but I feel comfortable with our, our plan so far. You know, we executed a bunch of stuff today that I thought looked really good. And uh, we'll get into our red zone and our third and uh, third and long stuff tomorrow. Um, but, but you know, I, I told the guys really at the end of the day, listen, our, our goal is to go 1-0 and every week. It doesn't matter who's coming in here. It's kind of cool that, that, that they're ranked first in the country and they're really good and we're playing on ABC and all that kind of thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, we, we want to be 1-0 and every week and it's got to be about us, you know. And um, what we did last week against Louisville in regard to not turning the ball over, minimizing our penalties, no drops. Uh, throwing on target throws, being physical in a run game. That's got to be the hallmark to who we are. And, um, you know, no matter who we're playing, we got to go out and play uh, our style of ball and execute, you know, at, at a high level. I mean, you know, when, when we've played really good players, you know, uh, you know, Florida State's front was as good as anybody in the country. So every week in this league, you know, you know, the defenses are going to be uh, very, very good with you know, and be very well coached. And so you're just going to have to execute your own plan. Okay, uh, time for one more. We'll have a question from Kelly Quinlan from Rivals to wrap it up. Given kind of what Clemson is and, and their defensive prowess, I imagine as a, a coach, um, the pressure's all on them. It's kind of probably interesting to see as a measuring stick where your young offense is, especially because you're so young at some key positions, quarterback, and to kind of see that transition from week to week. I imagine that sort of – uh, more of a measuring stick for you to kind of see how you guys adapt each week. Is that kind of how you approach this maybe versus getting too worked up over who they are and what they are? Yeah. I mean, I don't think you could do that. You know, I, I think that you have to just say, listen, this is what they do. This is who they are. They're really good. They got, they have good players and let's make it about us, man. You know, can we, can we block well, you know, can we run the ball? Can we throw, can we catch? Uh, are we going to execute? Are we going to play hard nose? Are we going to play tough? Are we going to, you know, clean piles off and push people around and be physical? Um, run the ball downhill, take shots down the field, play, you know, Georgia Tech offense. Um, let's worry about that. You know, um, they have, you know, elite skill. All right, let's find the guys where we like our matchups. You know, let's run the ball um, at, at these guys or let's throw the ball at these guys. Let's try to find the matchups that that favor us. And um, and really never worry about what we're playing. You know, it's 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 uh, it's been a proven fact, you know, across football that if you don't turn the ball over, and you're efficient, you know, that you're going to be able to move the ball. And you know, we you know have stubbed our toe along the way, and that's really been the you know the you know the thing that had been troubling earlier in the season. Um, and you know, you just take the next one as it comes, and you just happen to be playing the number one team in the country, so. You know that's cool, but we're not we're not overvaluing that at all. It's not that, you know, our meeting this morning. I said, listen, uh, how many yards do you need to get for a first down against Clemson? Everybody obviously said 10 yards. I said, is that any different than it was against Louisville or Florida State? No, you know, touchdowns still count for six points. You know what I mean? It's you know, a first down's a first down. A hard run's a hard run. You know, so. You know, they're a very good team, but, you know, let's worry about us and let's worry about playing our style of football and make them come defend us, you know, and, and play with that kind of attitude. Don't, don't you know, worry about who you're playing. Let's, let's make them come into Bobby Dodd on Saturday and defend us, you know, and give it, give it your best shot and try to knock them down and, and, and play hard and play aggressive. And, you know, when the ball's up in the air, go get the ball and try to run somebody over in a hole and, and if we do that, then it'll be a fun day on Saturday.